Hey y'all, this is Sarah. Some of you guys asked me if I could get a video pulled together of what it might look like to have a starter kit. Um, some of you kind of wanted to make a shopping list and this is a collection of my absolute favorite, this is what I would put together for myself or anybody else kind of tools. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is go through the paint products that I like. There will be a part two to this and I'll go into kind of the nerdy side of things of why I pick these materials and why not other materials. So if you're going to jump into a big project and you want it to hold up, the second part of this kind of beginner's introductory video is a really good one to catch so that you can work with your pieces and try to make them last as long as possible. The paints, the paint products that we're going to be using are the Waverly Wax in the color antique, the Waverly Wax in clear, and the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink, which is another name for black. These are my three go-to products. Just about any normal kind of wood tone, um, besides some of our more fun, playful colors, you're gonna be able to get out of these three products. Applicators and brushes. My favorite brushes, um, from here on out, everything else is is easy to find materials. These are all from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm a Dollar Tree crafter, kind of by nature, so I wanted to keep everything uh, really simple to get to in one place. So the brushes, these are my favorite brushes. They really are. I've got some nicer ones. They have softer bristles, but these hard, um, stiff bristles are my favorite. Next is the Dollar Tree Natural Bath Sponge. This has to be one of my favorite applicators for a lot of reasons. The second part of this will go into why and why I use it specifically the way that I do. But this is certainly a go-to in my little toolkit. Next in the sponges are these kitchen sponges. These are called nail guard sponges. You can see they have a nice beveled edge. This is now a staple in my personal little arsenal. This is great for doing your edge work, um, your sides of your pieces. They tend to shred other sponges. These hold up really, really well, and you'll see me use them for other things also. Last in the sponges and applicators are the Dollar Tree Makeup Wedge sponges. Um, these are really great for shading and shadowing and that kind of thing. They leave a nice texture behind that is very soft and muted. So I definitely love those. I believe they come in a 28 pack from Dollar Tree. Next is going to be our distressing tools. And these are tools that we're going to use to make our impressions in our foam core. Now, I use my fingernails when I do mine and uh, not everyone can do that. So I did find an alternative, which is this gel polish remover tool. It's a very sturdy little tool and it's really good for getting those knot holes. The other two that I have here, the slightly wider popsicle stick, if you can see this kind of gouge here in the wood, this is created with that. It's got a little bit of width. It's a very soft material so you're not gonna damage the surface too much or cut all the way through. When we're doing knot holes and wormholes, I always like to tell you to grab something pokey or stabby. Um, anything will work. Just try to make sure that you're not going too far through damaging both sides of your board. The less we can do to these overall, the better. The last little item is absolutely not necessary, but is certainly a convenience thing for me, um, are just some little containers. Right now I'm using some throwaway kind of condiment containers from, uh, to go bins that I have rinsed out and kept recycling. But some kind of little container like that to hold your paints. And here's a real quick tip why. When I pour these, these are very thick paints um, and waxes, and I tend to over pour. That's just kind of me, uh, especially with such a thick um, base product. I like pouring in these little containers instead. I can still dip all of my brushes down in here rather than just pouring it on a paint palette. 
And if I stop mid project, I'm just popping that back on there. If I'm ready to put things up for the evening, I'm not trying to get whatever leftover paint I have on my palette back into my bottle or any of that. Since I'm using predominantly the same colors, it's really convenient to just keep my antique wax in one, my clear in the other. Um, I typically keep one for each one of my products. So, um, those are kind of my favorite things. The last thing I wanted to throw in this, oh, um, glue. I'm using glue sticks. I have a preference for them and that's for a couple reasons. They aren't a wet glue and I really don't want to use a whole lot of wet products. I go further into that when it comes down to the chemistry of products reacting with the foam. That'll be in the part two, but if you're just wanting to know, hey, how am I putting this project together? These are just Dollar Tree glue sticks, and I have no problems with them adhering, with them really holding, um, any of that. So these are my go-to adhesives on this. And then the very last thing that I wanted to throw in, because I do get asked this a lot, um, is how I hang my finished pieces. And this is how, this is not a Dollar Tree product, here although i do know that they carry some styles but this is how i hang all of my pieces i'll put one strip in each corner that way uh, i can get it level it certainly doesn't require multiple strips these are weighted for 16 pounds and these pieces end up very light on my lighter pieces i just use poster putty um, you know the the sticky stuff that you roll up in a little ball and you stick things up with that's on my lighter signs if you've seen some of those videos that's like the the eat sign that i made um my pantry sign those kind of signs are very lightweight and they will absolutely hold up with just the poster putty um i think that's everything i wanted to cover with you guys in this video the second one will certainly be longer and full of more information than you really probably wanted to know when you're getting into a craft but I throw that in there so that those of you that are investing the time, the energy, and the money into doing the big wall projects, the headboards, those kind of things, the better you're armed about knowing about that material, the more likely you are to have something that you're really proud of and for an extended period of time when you're done. Um, I hope that answers everything that you guys have been asking me about. I was trying to squeeze as much as I could in a fairly short video. That's why this is going to be two parts. I'll definitely get some information laid down in that second part, and I'm really looking forward to jumping into some paint projects. If you haven't checked out the Peppermint Cactus group page on Facebook, that is absolutely worth checking out. There's a whole lot of information to be accessible there. Um, earlier videos, they all started on that group in that platform before I got to here on YouTube. So a lot of the earlier videos, if I reference something that you can't find, very likely it's because it's in the group setting on Facebook. Um, so check that out. Look at all the inspiration. Look at what everyone's been posting and see if you get excited as much as I do about seeing all those amazing projects each and every day, just something new popping up and exciting my imagination and I hope other people's imagination so thanks for listening guys I'll be getting the other information out to you and hopefully a lot more videos of playtime bye guys